Hi, good evening. We're back in the meeting room with Akil from our mortgage broker. Uh, Akil has kindly offered to give us a live example of the difference between buying a buy to let property in a personal name and in a company structure. So, Akil, this is the challenge is on to get your maths. Better looking than Carol Vorderman. Um, <laughs> right, so this is the property scenario. We're in Bracknell as we stand, so we're going to go with a typical Bracknell house, value of around about £300,000, and the rent being around about twelve fifty a month. So, over to you. Let's see what the difference is. Thank you, Mike. Um, just before I start, this is just going to be for illustration purposes, and it is subject to credit criteria and lender underwriting. So, there's a disclaimer. So, Mike, your example. So, this is a purchase. Three bed, and it's a semi-detached house, yeah? Yes. Perfect, okay. So we've got a purchase price of 300,000, and we've got a monthly rent roll of 1,250 quid pounds per calendar month. Okay, so for, the, for your viewers, what you have to do, you're gonna take the monthly rent, times that by 12. So 1,250 times 12 equals 15,000, gross rental income, okay? Now, <clears throat> this example here is gonna be for someone that's buying a property in their personal name and we're gonna base them as high rate taxpayers, okay? So, you've got the 15,000 per annum rental income. What you're gonna do is divide that by 145% because they are high rate tax band and that's usually the stress test that most lenders would go on. So you do 15,000 divided by 145%. Now, I'm gonna go with a typical rate of 5%, sorry, I'm gonna go for a typical rate at a five year term. So based on a personal name, buy to let, we're gonna base that on 2%. Okay, 2% is a five year rate per annum rate. So you've got 1250 times 12, divided by 145%, divided by 145%, sorry, excuse me, times 12, divided by 145%, okay, divided by, so we're gonna go for a five year deal, as I said. Now, on five year deals, it's calculated at the notional rate with buy to let lenders. So that will be divided by 5%, okay, so this is in a, in a personal name. So if you divide that by 5%, the maximum lending they're gonna get is a 206,000 pounds, okay? So I'm just gonna double check that. I like to double check my numbers. 5%. Yep, 206,896. Okay, so I'm gonna round it down. It's 206,896, and this is for a five year personal name buy to let mortgage. Okay? <clears throat> I hope everyone's with me. So what I'm gonna do just for the video, should I recap that? Go for it. Okay, so Personal name, buy to let purchase for 300,000, 1,250 pounds per month rental income. You times the monthly income by 12 calendar months, that gets you an annual gross rent of 15,000 per annum. You take the 15,000 per annum, divide that by 145%, which is the standard stress test for a high rate taxpayer. And then you divide that by 5%, which was a notional stress test. That then equates to a loan of up to £206,896. Now, bearing in mind, most buy to let lenders only allow borrowing up to 75%. So that's the maximum loan that that rental income will be able to dictate. So with buy to let, the rental income dictates the maximum loan size. So bearing in mind the purchase price is 300000 the maximum that we're going to, the maximum 75% of that income there at 75 is 225,000. Okay, so we can't reach the 225,000. However, we can get the client 206,896 pounds mortgage. Now, on the same example, oh so you, I was just going to say, just to butt in, you're, yeah. you're looking at on that structure. As a buyer, you need a deposit of roughly £94,000 in order to buy the property. Yes. Great, great, great question. So, you'll need a £94,000 deposit. You'll need to factor in stamp duty. 
So whether you are a um, additional rate taxpayer, sorry, if you're paying an additional property, so you pay an additional surplus of 3%, so you've got to factor this in as well. So stamp duty, 94,000 deposit, and then depending on the lender, some lenders have incentives, some offer free valuation, some offer free legal fees. So we work with the lenders, we'll find out, what we do is we don't just look for the cheapest rate, we'll look at the incentives and the actual cost of the borrowing over that duration of, of time, in this example, for five years. Is that okay, Mike? Absolutely. So, that's that example. All right, so we're gonna use the same example, same numbers, but you're borrowing now in a limited company. So, so this is still a purchase. So it's a purchase of a buy-to-let property. Purchase price is £300,000. The rental income is £1,250 per calendar month. But we're going to buy it now in a limited company. Okay, so you once again, you take the monthly rental income, which is £1,250. You times that by 12, that gets us the gross income of 15,000 per annum. Okay, you take the gross income per annum, which is 15,000. What we're gonna do there is we're gonna divide that by 125%. Now, if you guys recall, we did that at 145 in the personal name e example. Now, the reason why it's 125, which is actually beneficial, is because you're buying it in a limited company. And they're not, they're not concerned about whether you're a basic rate taxpayer or a high rate taxpayer. They're basing it on, you're buying it at a limited company, so we're gonna stress it at 125%. So you hopefully can see the benefit there already. So, we get the annual rental income, which is 15,000. We divide that by 125%, okay? Divide that by 125%. And then what they do is, where I, where I divided the previous one by 5%, which is the stress test, they actually divide it here by the pay rate. So, the pay rate in, in Lehman, um, layman's terms. Layman's terms, there you go. It's been late, it's a late night. <laughs> in layman's terms, is they, they, then, they then calculate it at the pay rate of the five-year fixed deal. So, the pay rate, in essence, means the rate of interest per annum that a lender is going to charge you. So I'm going to give you a rough indication of what a five-year per annum rate looks like. And at the moment, we're going to go by that at 3.5%. Now, some of you might be thinking, 3.5% for a buy-to-let mortgage is quite sharp. It can be, and it is. And unfortunately, that is the rates what it is. But if you do the calculation and just bear with me, you'll see the difference. So we'll do 15,000 divided by 125%. Then we divide that by 3.5. So if you guys have got your calculators out, that's gonna to come to a grand total of 342,857 pounds. How much was the previous one, Mike? 204, if I remember 206. right. 206. 206. So, this is limited company, and it's 206809 or something like that, yeah? And this is personal name. <clears throat> so buying in a limited company allows you, it's the same numbers, purchase price still the same, the rental income is still the same. However, the calculation is different in a limited company versus personal name. So buying in a limited company would allow you to borrow up to 342857 compared to personal name at 206809 now, you can see the benefit there. You're going to get a huge more chunk buying it at a limited company. So where the purchase price there is 300000 you can now actually borrow 225000 Yeah, so now you can actually borrow 225000 against the purchase price of three hundred. Whereas if you bought it in your personal name, you can only borrow two hundred six. So you So then you've just saved yourself outlaying... Nineteen thousand pounds, which will probably go towards your stamp duty, if you're an addition, if you if it's an additional property. So hopefully that helps with regards to how to calculate rental income in a personal name and a limited company, and then this will give you the the difference in loan amount. It's a big big thing. It's a big big calculation. Many many lenders have got their own ways of calculating rental income. 
as I said at the beginning of the video, it is just an illustration, but it gives you a good indication on how it's calculated and and the difference. This is what I really we, what we really want to do is paint a picture of borrowing in a limited company against buying a property in your personal name. Now, as I said, they both have got their pros and cons. Do speak to an accountant if you are going to buy in a limited company. Do speak to mortgage advisors like us to give you that advice and where you may see benefit. Um, but I hope that helps. That's absolutely fantastic. It's a really good example for those of us who are out looking for a buy to let at the moment, and potentially if you already own them already, just to see what the options are that are out there for you. It's something that I can almost guarantee your estate agent and letting agent do not understand and will not discuss with you, and potentially even your high street mortgage advisor who works in an estate agency will not see these different types of structures available to them. Now, that said, there's pros and cons for both uh, in being able to offset the mortgages against tax in different ways and extra administrational charges in the in the company structure. So again, as Akil said, engage a good accountant, engage a great mortgage advisor and it'll open up a whole world more of options to you if you're looking to do something. So hope you enjoyed this segment and uh, maybe we'll see you next week.